Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Monday, August 21st. Today we are looking at the Jaguars' big winners on the offensive side of the ball, the ones who stood out the most in their 25-7 convincing win over the Detroit Lions in preseason week two. We'll go ahead and dive into it. Got to start nowhere else than Tank Bigsby. This guy has been unbelievable for the Jaguars throughout the preseason and training camp. Looking back at his Auburn tape, it should come as no surprise. He has the power to run the ball inside the numbers, speed to hit the edge, creativity in space as well. He's everything you could want from a rookie backup running back and more. He will be a starter one day in this league, whether that's in Jacksonville or somewhere else. Tank Bigsby is the real deal at running back. He continues to show it, and I'm excited for what he's going to add to that backfield for the Jaguars in 2023 and beyond. Looking at the wide receiver spot, Elijah Cooks. Do not cut this man, Doug Peterson. Do not try to stash him on your practice squad. He is too effing good. He catches everything thrown his way. Even the nine route down the right side uh, that that was close to being a touchdown where he and Nathan Rourke just couldn't quite fit it in down the sideline was just a little bit out of bounds. He even caught that thing. Look, he was like an uncle playing backyard football with all the kids at Thanksgiving on that slant where he just monstered everyone and almost found his way to the end zone. Uh, was was unfortunately just chased down right at the very end there after a monster stiff arm. And then he went up to the top shelf uh, to haul in another big one down the field from Nathan Rourke. Elijah Cooks has caught everything thrown his way. He's looked like he's got some ability to run multiple different routes. You know, in college at San Jose State was a nine route specialist, deep ball guy. But he's been able to, to be effective on slants, on digs. On jump balls, I mean, Elijah Cooks has been catching everything thrown his way, as I mentioned, whether it's on the vertical part of the field, going horizontal, stretching the field that way. Elijah Cooks has been really good for the Jaguars. He's 6'4", 215 pounds. He has a physicality at the position that no one else in their room really does. I would be shocked if the Jaguars end up cutting him and he does not end up making another roster and making an impact at some point in the next couple of years, it would be really surprising to me. That's how talented I think Elijah Cooks is for the Jaguars right now. You're hoping that they try to keep him as their sixth wide receiver, but they value special teams a lot. Cooks never really played special teams in college, so he's kind of behind the eight ball in that regard, but he's trying to catch up, trying to do what he can on special teams to make this roster as a receiver. We'll see how it plays out. I think Elijah Cooks, it would be a big mistake to let this man walk. So we'll see how it all plays out for him. But again, just a really special performance from him. A couple really big time catches. Did the same thing in preseason week one. Uh, Has done it throughout training camp. You saw it on his college tape at San Jose State in Nevada. I think the Jags would be crazy to move on from Elijah Cooks. Now, Dearness Johnson, this is a player that I don't think the Jaguars will be moving on from. Running back, probably going to be running back three or four for the Jaguars. He's a special runner as well. A great special team or two. That's part of the reason the Jaguars brought him in. But just looking at him on the offensive side of the ball, he was able to show the ability to hit the edge, similar to Tank Bigsby, but also be able to run with a little bit of power inside, contact balance. And he's got good hands too. I mean, you saw him make an incredible one-handed grab. Didn't really go anywhere because it wasn't a very good throw from Nathan Rourke overall. It was a little low for him, and he wasn't able to get any momentum and find his way into the end zone right there close to the goal line. But he scored on the very next play. He had another nice long touchdown run where he was able to hit the outside edge and and, uh, just beat the defenders to the pylon there. So Dearness Johnson, he continues to stack great weeks for the Jaguars. Uh, I think he's got that job locked in at the back of the roster for the Jaguars at running back. I think he's just been uh, a really welcomed addition. Great depth for the Jaguars in that running back room. Now you've got Dearness Johnson, who can do a little bit of everything, including special teams. Jamichael Hasty, who's a very good kind of scat back, third down back type. He can pass block. He can catch out of the backfield. He can do some things for you getting outside. And then the, the two-headed monster up top with Travis Etienne. And Tank Bigsby, really impressive stuff for that Jaguars running back room. And then I mentioned Nathan Rourke wasn't the most accurate ball to to Dearness Johnson uh, at the goal line, but he was very accurate overall on this on this uh, preseason week two matchup. I think in this game, more so in the first game, more so than in the first game, he was on time. He was within structure. And he was getting it done. Um, I think that that's what you wanted to see after the first game, where a lot of it was really just kind of winging it, you know, from odd arm angles, throwing the ball off platform, 
getting out of the pocket. He did some of that stuff today, but he was a lot more in control, a lot more within the structure of the offense. And I think if you're Doug Peterson, that's exactly what you want to see for Nathan Rourke trying to make this team as QB3 or you know stick around on the practice squad. We'll see how it plays out with him. But uh, if the Jaguars do decide to try to stash him on the practice squad, it would not surprise me one bit with how he's been playing if another team decides to go ahead and scoop him up because he's got the wheels. I think he's got the arm. You've really seen that over the last couple weeks in preseason. He's really improved once he's actually gotten into real games. So I think Nathan Rourke is a fun guy trying to compete uh, to, to keep a spot on this roster. I don't think the Jaguars, and, and Doug Peterson said as much, are going to consider him as a QB2 option. They like C.J. Beathard, for better or for worse. They're a big fan of C.J. Beathard as the QB2 in that room. Nathan Rourke does not have a shot at this point to to become that. But could he stick around his QB3? I do think it's possible. You've seen Doug Peterson keep three quarterbacks before. Looking at Brenton Strange, the Jaguars' second-round pick this year, tight end out of Penn State, he's easily... Their second best tight end, in my opinion, and he's showing that in preseason games. Um, he's catching everything thrown his way. He's very physical at the point of attack in the run game. He's also able to get out in space and do things as a blocker. I think Brenton Strange, uh, you see why the Jaguars valued him so highly and why they picked him up with that second round pick continues to impress me. Um, Walker Little, he played this game at guard, left guard, next to Cam Robinson. Robinson struggled a little bit, but we're talking about the offensive standouts in a positive way right now. Robinson did struggle, but Walker Little, he was very good at guard. I thought he played better at guard this week than he played at left tackle last week. You saw him able to create a little bit of push in the run game. 17 pass block snaps did not allow a single pressure. I think Walker Little if that is the path that they want to go down once Cam Robinson returns from in, from from suspension, excuse me, after week four, if they want to put Walker Little at left guard and Cam Robinson at left tackle, I think that could work out in a big way. Um, I think it could also work out just having Walker Little playing left tackle and Ben Barcha at left guard. We'll see. Uh, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't think the Jaguars are thinking about not playing Cam Robinson once he gets back. He has too much experience for them and uh, just – makes a lot of money to be sitting on the bench. So we'll see how all that plays out. Walker Little is going to start the season at left tackle for the Jaguars while Cam Robinson is on that suspension. Uh, but very good performance for him at left guard. I think if, if that is the route you want to go down with, with him at left guard and Cam at left tackle, you definitely saw that Walker Little can play some guard for you uh, at this level, even though he hasn't really played guard before. The Jaguars have been getting him reps. Um, throughout training camp at guard he's been looking solid there look solid against the Lions here so good stuff for Walker Little shout out to Tim Jones had that big catch down the field on the slot fade contested catch Uh, really impressive for him he was the guy that made the sixth wide receiver spot last year for the Jaguars he's got a lot more competition for that spot this year we'll see how it plays out and then another shout out to Parker Washington who was able to uh, on that out from the bunch formation in the red zone, able to beat his man uh, to get to the catch point and then also zoom up the field and get that touchdown. So really good stuff from him. Um, Love to see Parker Washington making plays. Jaguars um, mid day three pick out of Penn State. Those two Penn State guys have been pretty damn, pretty damn effective for the Jaguars so far. Uh, throughout their early parts of their rookie seasons. But that'll do it for the offensive standouts. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. We will be talking more about the injuries. Doug Peterson gave us an update on that this morning. We'll get into defensive standouts as well. And the Jaguars, they are going to be playing their starters for a quarter or two against the Dolphins in the final preseason game this weekend. Miami Dolphins are coming to Jacksonville for the Jaguars' only preseason home game of the 2023 slate. But again, really appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Um, you can also check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. And of course, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.